original road boy clean on a gun. All original road boy clean on a gun. Come let me take it to the John Mika down. Come let me take it to the John Mika down. Come let me take it to the John Mika down. Come let me take it to the John Mika down. And I sent me every bottom all road me go. And I sent me every bottom all road me go. And I sent me every bottom all road me go. And I sent me every bottom all road me go. That blood clots and bunty can I be in the man of the world from the children. No. All right, everybody, welcome back to SoFlow TV again. If you've never been here before, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into this one. Desmond John Ballantyne, one of the most prolific in reggae dance hall sphere. Ninja Man, as he's known, a legend in dance hall music, one of the pillars in dance hall music. So... This video right here is a little bit about who Ninja Man was for the people who do not know his storied history. And then also we're going to get into information or should I say things surrounding the reason why Ninja Man went to prison or got a life sentence. All right. This is not about his guilt or innocence. This is about why he went to prison. Ninja Man saw it coming. Anyhow, Desmond John Ballantyne, he was born January 24th of 1966, better known to most of us as Ninja Man, the original gold teeth, front teeth, Dan Gargan, gun pan teeth, brush teeth with toothpaste, that kind of stuff that was his moniker back in the day. And sometimes we call him Dan Gargan or Don Gorgon. That's a popular Jamaican DJ and actor as well. Known for his controversial and his pro-gun lyrics and his stuttering and his melodramatic style. In 2017, Ninja Man received a life sentence in prison for murder. Let's go a bit through his biography and then we can get into the meat of how did Ninja Man get a life sentence and could it have been avoided. Ninja Man said some things right before he got incarcerated and those are the things we're going to get into we're talking about some salacious information about people trying to control certain parts of the music industry and certain artists and their catalogs super cat the great super cat himself spoke on this all right so ninja man was actually born in anato bay jamaica and then he moved to Kingston at the age of 12. He launched his DJ career with the Black Culture Sound System at the age of 14. And back then, at 14 years old, he was known as Double Ugly. Double Ugly. Imagine what low self-esteem you must have had of yourself to, I'm going to do music. And I'm going to name myself Double Ugly. But if everyone's around you telling you that you're ugly, oh my God, you're so ugly. Double Ugly would be a fitting name that you would accept, right? All right. In 1980, he joined another legendary sound called Kilimanjaro Sound System, where he got the chance to learn from other big established DJs in the dancehall reggae music scene, like the legendary Supercat and Early B. And he released his debut single. Ninja Man's debut single was called ugly man ugly man yet another name change after ugly man or double ugly and he named himself then ninja man he stuck with ninja man and this is the ninja man we know today in 1987 ninja man recorded and produced for himself his first single called protection that was a duet with courtney melody the following year brought more prolific collaborations with big names like King Jammies, Lloyd Pickout Dennis, Witty Exterminator, Phillips Fatis Burrell, Redman, Aine Kamosi, Bobby Digital, Augustus Gussie Clark, and Steely and Cleavy, and Henry Junjo Laws. That's just the name of few. Ninja Man is legendary in reggae music, dancehall music. Okay, and he has worked with 
if you could name them and they're at the top of the top as far as producers or other artists goes he either worked with them recording music with them did collaborations with them or performed alongside them on shows where he was the headline now it has been said that ninja man comes up with all his lyrics on the spot in the recording studio and he's known as the greatest freestyler in dance hall i just watched a video of him doing it straight off the top of his head and i'm telling you that you know we know ninja already so anyhow his hit over the years 1989 to 1992 he had some hits like Bada clash Bada clash and then he came back with another one called murder them murder them and then he came back with permit to bury we have a permit to bury and a license to kill and something like that and then he came back with above the law reinforce his image ninja man's image as a violent rude boy remember this because it's going to come up later it reinforced his image as a violent rude boy one of his most infamous rivalries besides the ongoing quarrel that he had with flower gang and supercat was the one with shabaranks leading to a number of clashes with shabaranks he had a famous clash with the now king of dancehall or reigning king of dancehall as any would say which is none other than adija palmer vibes cartel himself everybody remembers vibes cartel physically assaulting ninja man on the stage and if you are a connoisseur of this you also remember that ninja man said that it's easy for him to pick up an ak-47 and take this to war but he doesn't think that's what the audience wants but anyhow my audience said kill me kill from night till daylight and these things that was right after the assault him and vibes cartel have made things up over the years and vibes cartel has given ninja man his accolades many of times over and his due respect in 1993 criticism of ninja man's violence and his pro-gun lyrics started coming to the forefront leading to a decline in performing gigs and chances to record because ni around 93 people started saying listen the vulgar gun lyrics and stuff we need to cut it out right so if that's what the artist is promoting we're not going to be booking him and you know when the government starts to go after you in that manner then the promoters too normally say ah we can't book him because police are gonna lock off the sound and all these things right that's the beginning of ninja man's problems by 1997 ninja man had changed his name once again because he was trying to also change his life he was hooked on drugs for quite some time and he's spoken about this at length and admitted it i remember ninja man saying something like me can't tell you about cocaine and the effects of it and how it can damage your life if i never did it and tried it myself and went down that road so when i tell you about it i'm telling you about it from first-hand experience not from what i read in a book or heard from others right so ninja got to a place in life where he wanted to clean up himself so he got off the drugs he started working out doing good recording music again but this time he was performing gospel reggae songs under the name of brother desmond everybody welcomed him back yes ninja gone to church so now people see like marion hall aka lady saw go that route from the dance hall to the church and they must understand that others have done it before i mean jamaica is a christian nation you know and when you decide okay i'm gonna go the right way the indoctrination is there from birth we grow up we bond we get christened we go to church on sundays or saturdays that kind of stuff so it's always in the back of your mind so when someone normally thinks okay it's time for me to clean up my life go get some help from god for my conditions etc they normally think in a christian way and that's what he did and he changed his name to brother desmond he sought help to fight his crack cocaine addiction and he became born again in born again christianity right in 1999 now this was 97 now fast forward to 1999 he was cast in third world cop which is a movie that is a classic and if you've never seen third world cop just watch it just to see ninja man's role in it 
a Jamaican action crime film directed by Chris Brown, starring Paul Campbell, the legendary Paul Campbell. It was produced by Chris Blackwell of Island Jamaica Films, and it became the highest grossing Jamaican film, with Ninja Man playing a star role in it. Other movies he acted in include Rude Boy, The Jamaican Don in 2003, and Gangsters Paradise in 2004. In March of 2009, I bet a lot of people didn't know that Ninja Man acted in so many movies. So for those of you who are missing Ninja Man on the scene, can you know if he was out here, he would be speaking to the people, especially in his last days before he was incarcerated. He was on Instagram quite a lot. And his slogan was, send out the hearts, send out the hearts. And then people would take those Instagram videos and post them to YouTube where more people would engage his content, right? All right. So those are the four movies, Rude Boy, The Jamaican Don, Gangsta's Paradise, some of the movies that he acted in along with uh, Third World Cop. And I encourage you to go see those movies, if not for anything, just to see Ninja Man's role in those movies he was a stellar actor and natural at it as well now in march of 2009 ninja man along with his son janeel they were arrested and they were charged in connection with the murder of ricardo johnson on mall road kingston jamaica ninja man although not born there was raised in this area ninja man even made a comment one time on video and he said quote unquote ask any bad man any man round ya then we tell you say a me at the don for mall road now when you claim donship for an area that can mean problems especially in the dance hall sphere where the talk is that a lot of dance hall artists that come from certain communities rise in fame and money through the music and then use that fame and that money to go back to control the area and to have a lot of yes men form their own gangs in the area or are known as dons in the area so when ninja man said i'm the don of marl road i said he's in trouble he was granted bail on this murder trial in the sum of two million jamaican dollars that was in march of 2012 and ninja was out on bail for a while and he was scheduled to appear in court the 15th of july of 2012 at least 58 jurors were needed for the start of the trial but only 15 showed up this is jamaica nobody even wants to be a juror on a ninja man case right ninja man is seen like um a national icon so to speak the trial was scheduled to start april of 2015 but again it was postponed and it was rescheduled to start in january of 2016 in 2015 he parted ways listen to this part in 2015 he parted ways with down sound records and he, which is Joe Bagdanovich, and he opened up his own picture frame studio on Blackwood Terrace in Kingston. A lot of talk was out there that when Ninja Man left Down Sound is when his troubles really began because they had stuff hanging over his head. Keep that in your mind. On November of 2017, November 20th to be specific, Ninja Man and his co-accused were found guilty of the 2009 murder of Ricardo Johnson, that's Ninja Man and his son, got life sentences. On December 18th of 2017, he was sentenced to life in prison. A lot of people are wondering, how long is Ninja Man going to be in prison? Is he ever coming out? Ninja Man went to prison at 50-something years old. He is supposed to do 25 years before he is eligible for parole 50 and 20 is 70 plus 5 from each number 80 years old ninja will be in his late 70s to early 80s before he is released if he is not released after appealing his case and i don't think he's going to just sit there like that and take that time right and that's 
kind of a sad ending to a legacy of someone who is so respected within the culture and is so celebrated within the culture and is such an iconic person within the culture, right? All right. There were rumors when Ninja Man first went to prison that life was rough because they were beating him behind bars, other prisoners. And one of the things that he was getting attacked for, now mind you, I'm saying these are rumors because I didn't see and I'm just reporting because there were, he said in an interview, I believe it was on on stage where Winford Williams asked him about conjugal visit in prison. Should prisoners receive conjugal visit? Of course, a lot of us are saying yes, because men are locked up together for years. They're stressed out, testosterone flying around. That's where you have all these male on male rapes and you have fights and stabbings and murders and beatings, etc. Right. Maybe if you let their woman go see them and give them a room where they can let some steam off. It won't be all that trouble behind bars. That's what the typical person was thinking. Of course, most people were thinking, no, no conjugal visit for them. They're criminals. They don't deserve to have a woman come visit them and give them sexual favors after they have committed the crimes they have, especially murderers, right? Ninja Man himself now joined the line that said prisoners should not get conjugal visits. So ironically... He ends up behind bars, not on a short stay, but behind bars on a life sentence where he is supposed to be behind bars for at least 25 years. And his stance while he was free was that prisoners should not get conjugal visit. Now, mind you, Ninja had been in prison before. He had done time before. He had talked about how rough it is in there. He had talked about how he had gotten into fights and his celebrity status didn't really save him. And you can go crazy back there and how people beat him up back there and knock out his teeth and how he beat up other people back there for himself as well. Two videos surfaced of Ninja Man when he went silent. Then he went silent. Two videos since he went in. I remember one of them, him having on all white and he was smoking. I don't know if it was a spliff or if it was a cigarette. And people were amazed at how healthy he was looking. And he was in all white clothing. It's hard to keep your whites white in prison, right? We don't know how Ninja is keeping his whites white, but he was looking pretty good. And some people were rejoicing that, yes, he's doing his time, but he's not dead. And he's not back there losing his mind. But here's the trick. The videos were taken on contraband. So, of course, that sparked wide outrage. How are these prisoners getting videos from phones or cameras or whatever equipment that is being snuck in there and they're getting this footage out here to the Internet? It made the Jamaican um, prison system look kind of bad, right? So it's easy to assume that Ninja Man got locked down after all that happened. And we haven't seen any new footage of Ninja Man since. In closing, Ninja Man believes that he himself was not, I don't know if it was set up. And there are talks out there about for royalties and for his publishing. And he was, they had something over his head. I remember when they flew in the witness to testify against Ninja Man. And Ninja Man had to be taken to the hospital. Because he started having chest pains, anxiety. I guess seeing this witness who they thought was no longer in existence suddenly show up, fly in from overseas to testify against him. He knew that, hey, it was over. But let's not forget Ninja Man's message before he went in. Shortly before Ninja Man went in, after he left Down Sound, he said, and I'm not implying that Down Sound is doing anything to him. I'm just saying the chain of events that happened. I remember Ninja Man saying something about Isaiah Leng 
which is eerily similar to what Vibes Cartel said on that interview with Cliff Hughes, where Cartel said, right now in Amasa you can think I'm um, just look out for anything happen to Vibes Cartel and I can lose my life, I can even lose my freedom, right? And he says, I'm not gonna bite my tongue and say it. And he brought up those names. Ninja Man did similar. And Ninja Man specifically said, I'm tired of being the donkey that's following the carrot. So right now, I'm done play them game. And anything they want to do, they can do it. That right there said a lot. And I'm still wondering what was he talking about? Because shortly after that, he received a life sentence in prison. We're going to leave this one right here. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. And I'll catch you on the next video. SoFlow TV. I'm out. Peace.